And who are we? Well, we are a biotech company in clinical phase, and we are listed on the spotlight market. So the mission of Aptahem is to develop RNA-based therapeutics, or as we call them, aptamers. And these are not vaccines or anything connected with gene therapy or anything like that, but I will come back to that soon. And we focus on, on very severe sicknesses that lack treatments today and have a big unmet need. We have a lead candidate called APTA1, which is uh, to treat uh, septic, septic uh, uh, conditions uh, uh, where we have a problem with the organ breakdown and so forth, what happens at very severe inflammatory responses. So that's what we're focusing on. But there are also other classes around this, which I will come to soon. So if you look at the left now, we are in the interface of inflammation and coagulation. And here happens a lot of evil inflammatory diseases, as you can see from this globe to the left side. We have a few sicknesses there, and they compromise a huge market potential. And that's important when you want to tap into biotechnology and, and do something good. But there is also this big unmet need, and people that suffer and die prematurely from these awful sicknesses. So big market potential. But if you look at the globe again, we have different conditions, the RDS. That's a lung-driven uh, uh, inflammatory lung syndrome that many COVID patients had a problem with. And that leads to sepsis sometimes, as well as sepsis leads to DIC, which is an extreme coagulation or an extreme bleeding. That is a follow-up from sepsis, very evil. About 30% of sepsis patients die from DIC. It goes very fast. This is why it's an instant uh, situation that not many survive. And of course, we're working, as everyone else here today presenting, finding a partner to lift us all the way to the market. That's important. And uh, we have no intention of taking ourselves to the market. It's too costly. We don't have all the knowledge and so forth. But we uh, make sure that we will do the first steps, at least phase one and phase two. That's our intention. And then we want to lift it off some, to someone that can hold our hand all the way to the market. And um, if we then look at APTA1, which is our lead candidate, and why is it so good? Well, I just said this is not a gene therapy, this is not a vaccine. These are pieces of RNA. We take pieces here and there. That's a big mix of RNA. And those are built around a specific target that you want to target, bit by bit. So you get the perfect fit with this RNA-based aptamer. That means you have very high efficacy. You also have a low probability of side effects. So that's one of the advantages. And they can also be synthetically made. If you understand, you take, you cut RNA and you put them together again, glue them together like, like Lego pieces, which I usually use. And um, APTA1 is our candidate, and we have seen that it has very, very good results from preclinic. Uh, in those models, we have used septic models, uh, septemia models, all kinds of models that resemble those sickness uh, situations that I showed you in this globe initially. And uh, we have an abundance of preclinical results, and now we are in clinic and we start to get some results there too. Even if it's a double-binded study, we have indications that are very interesting that we also told the market about. So, uh, and also for all these years with collaborations and scientific collaborators, we have found a very good understanding of the mechanism, which is hyper important. And that's not always the case when you handle biotechnology to know so much about the mechanism like we do. At least we think so. Uh, so um, with that said, here's the source recipe at the moment. This is the mode of action. And what are we doing here? We are inhibiting PAR receptors. What happens in the body when you have an inflammatory response or an infection is that the liver throws out thrombin. If you look at the left side, that's thrombin. That's the coagulation protein. That have several sites on it. And one of the sites we are working on. And we are inhibiting or stopping the power activation. And as you look at the right side, you probably are familiar with all these sickness cases you see there. And this is just some of them that are driven by the power activation and what happened there. So if you look at this Mickey Mouse structure to the left, you see also two ears. These are not uh, uh, struck by APTA1. APTA1 selectively only sits on the uh, green ring here, and that is heparin binding site or exocyte 2, only selectively. 
Otherwise, if, if we would uh, attach the other sites, we could see side effects and other problems that usually anticoagulants have, and that's a bleeding effect, for example. So by doing this, we have a very instant reaction to the power receptor stimulation that works within minutes, actually. It's an IV, by the way, that we give to the potential patient. And uh, that gives us also a very rapid anti-inflammatory and anti-thrombotic response in the body. And we have plenty of proof for that. So compared to the landscape, it is good that not only we are doing this, that others also try to do this. But what I want to point out with this uh, slide is that we have something we think is a little special with us, so that we consider both the coagulation side of things, the inflammatory side of things, which others focus on either side. And that sometimes comes with uh, um, th that you don't treat the condition properly if you oversee the coagulation side or you oversee the inflammatory side of things. So what we see that we do with our, as we see, the blockbuster potential candidate is that we can take both sides in the process. And by that we can open up for a bigger patient population as well as uh, maybe curing more people in the future. And there are, of course, those uh, who are interested in this, or as I call them, benefactors here. And it's first of all, when we get this drug on the market, we can then have uh, uh, that done, and that means physicians, uh, medical doctors can use this to treat patients, save patients. And in the end of the day, we save a lot of money, as we see it, by not putting a lot of effort on society, but foremost on the suffering from those who would pass or be severely invalidized uh, from, from having these severe sicknesses. And that's important to remember. That's a big uh, win in all this um, uh, chain of, of value. Just a few deals that's been made in the territory of inflammatory and thrombotics. Uh, this is uh, preclinical to phase two. I just want to show that there are still happening something. It's not dead. Deals are happening. So that gives some positive vibes to us trying to find that golden partner to hold, us, hold our hand to the, to the market, of course. And um, doing all this, of course, with all the results we have, we need to secure the rights or the control of something. And this is why we have patents. Patents is absolutely rudimentary to run a company and try to do something and get it on the market. Otherwise, no one will touch this. And we have two patent families. Patent family one is for these free aptamers that we have protection. And the patent two uh, family is the protection, the therapeutic protection of APTA one's uh, use. So to say, a therapeutic patent, very, very big patent, cover mostly uh, most things due to aptamers is the new frontier. There's nothing to be scared of when you venture out west in the aptamer fields. There's no cross licensing or other things that will disturb you. And our pipeline is, as, as you understand, APTA1 is our main candidate. The other candidates we have to keep a little low. It's costly to run pipelines, so, but we would love to run them, uh, given that we have so much information and, and knowledge from APTA1 program. But this is what we're focusing on right now, APTA1. And that is in uh, clinical phase 1A. And a little looking at, we always talk about milestones and, and value points and, and that we need to know or to, to reach uh, to securing a partner. And this is our process at the moment. I just said we are in phase 1A now. It's a double-blinded study. And we are looking towards making a one beta study, which is a proof of concept study in healthy individuals. We stimulate them with a toxin, we get the readout to see how good our candidate is. And of course, we're already now discussing how we would run a phase two and even a phase three and all the way to the market, which is important when you meet with partners or potential partners to show where you are going. Otherwise, you have nothing to talk about. Uh, there's a lot of other activities. We have a lot of scientific acti activities. We have a lot of fantastic collaborators. We focus also always on looking on the patent situation as it is the most crucial value you have, uh, with exception of all the data that you carry with you and the studies. So there's a lot of things happening here and um, I will not bother too much about this, but bring it all together here in a snapshot, as we call it. What is APTA here and what do we have on offer with APTA1 as a candidate? Well, we have very good early data, very much data, and we also have now in phase one seen some interesting things that we can't disclose because they're, it's a double-blinded study. And it's very fast-acting, IV, five minutes, 
and we have a double-sided uh, uh, efficacy from, from this uh, candidate. It's both on inflammatory side as coagulation side of things. But uh, putting everything together, uh, I see that you are getting ready for the questions. Okay, but we have very good commercial collaborators, I want to say that too, that we will be nothing without. And of course the scientific collaborators have been very, very powerful in helping us unfolding the mechanism that we know so much more about today. And the team is very streamlined. We have very good uh, competence in the company to adapt into the, uh, yeah, the specific situations that we have. And okay, almost the last. Uh, this is another group put out an analysis and uh, I think a lot of us companies in the public domain um, knows what we are talking about here, but I will quote Warren Buffett. He says, price is what you pay, value is what you get. And that's really what we see on the market today. And then I say thank you. Thank you, Mikael. Alrighty. <laughs> Do we have any questions for Mikael? I will start then by, uh, you said you didn't want to bore us too much with the patents, but just to understand, so you have the two patent families, but you're still actively working to add more patent protection? Well, it's, it's a protection of, if we have new findings, it's important. Uh, another way to, to make your assets survive longer is to deal with new ways how to manufacture your API, I mean your drug. Uh, that's something you always have to look into, and uh, different versions of that that could be patentable, because that this is your main, you know, value in the company. Otherwise, you have nothing to come with. That's what I always say. So we're looking very much into that, and if we don't do that, we will publish it. So there are lots of activities ongoing now to keep the interest up in Aptam whilst we wait for the phase one results. Well, uh, as we have uh, declared publicly, we are on a pause. Uh, we just collected uh, extra analytic uh, results there from, and we are very happy, happy about what we see there. Now uh, it's uh, being concluded and will be sent to the, the authorities, and then it's out of our hands time-wise. So um, we will just have to wait and see, and I hope it will be fast so we yes, can continue. You know my next question was going to be a timeline for that. Yeah, I, I, I felt that, so yeah. I, I took it immediately. <laughs> That's out <laughs> of your hands, like you say. Um, is there anything to be said what you've seen uh, in the analysis that you just did and you just communicated around? And yeah, I have to I have to go around this fire a bit because you know it's it's something that we will not disclose at the moment. And as I said here, it's a double-blinded study. So, but we can see from the analytical results that for us it just tells us something really good about things. I, I'm sorry to be this inexact. And we have to disclose it when we are there and concluded the study. Then we can unveil what's happening and when it's unblinded, of course. Yeah, and in the meantime, um, uh, you're, um, can you elaborate on the business and partnership uh, activities and the strategy you have for that? Well, the strategy is to, to reach out and, and, of course, in the development program of the company, to reach those milestones or these inflection points, value points that you have, as may they be smaller or bigger, but you have to build on that momentum and, and have something new to talk about. I mean, I've been on the field for a long time and you meet representatives and you talk to these and you talk about what's on our one. Okay, sounds interesting and you get some feedback, but you know, uh, in this world, you, you need a really strong inflection point, and, and we in the company believe that will come with, with a one beta study when that's finalized. It's, mm -hmm. it's still a proof of concept, even if it's not in patients, that will give, a, as we hope, of course, a strong indication where we are going in the next step. Yeah. And you describe your technology a little bit like a Lego uh, or a, a set of Lego pieces. So yeah. that that just makes me think you can build pretty much anything. I mean, where where are the limits, and, and, and how do you manage that? I'm not really the person to say where the limits go, but I, I think it's it has a lot of freedom degrees for sure. Uh, it, it's it's a method that's been long time uh, available, but the problem has been manufacturing of uh, longer. RNA sequences that uh, gives these candidates and ours are quite long so I mean it's not that long ago since it was possible to manufacture and we have made amazing gains in manufacturing in big scale with our uh, US and UK collaborators so we need really big big step forward also for the cost profile mm. so we are very happy on that side and answering your question yes I, I think so it's an open window to yeah. 
to, to, to explore. And how much would you say that this first project with APTA 1 is guiding all the other possible activities uh, with the uh, other uh, candidates and, and things coming? That's a very good question. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the target that we used, the initial target, is a very advanced, it's a an, it's an parasite target. All this free importation came from the same target, but their structure, the chemical structure, is totally different. And we know from testing at least up to two that there are some different fingerprints with this. So we have good hope that we have two other candidates that we could develop into other uh, um, therapeutic uses. We have a final question from the gentleman over here. Since I get the final questions, but uh, I, I uh, had a question on uh, this is a risky business with sepsis, I guess, uh, very interesting area. Uh, but there are also different approaches. You have the anti-inflammatory and the anticoagulation, and in some cases also you deal with the uh, intima of the arterioles. The, you can have a leakage and you can attack the leakage. Yeah. So have you any sort of idea? Um, I mean, it, I, I know a company in Berlin called Andenomed, Adresitsumab, and they recruited a lot of money on the basis of their, of their substance and attacking the leakage of the intima. What, what approach is the best one? I mean, it's, a com it's extremely heterogeneous sickness conditions that occur during sepsis. You never know where it ends. I talk about from, from a lung syndrome into sepsis, from sepsis to DIC. Uh, you don't know which way it will turn, but what is general for these severe sicknesses is that if you don't treat them, you see a loss of blood pressure, which is mostly uh, uh, connected to leaking vascular. And that is often microvascular, like in, in, in the liver or kidneys, and that leads to tissue damage or tissue dead, and the patient dies. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening, and from all, all our investigations, at least in the preclinic, we see that we can withheld a very good blood pressure and we also have markers that indicate that we have a tissue protecting effect from our candidate. Well, mm. so follow up, but um, it, it, with sepsis, it seems that you have something that you could call like an event horizon, almost like a black, a black hole, and you get across the horizon, then you have a full septic shock, yeah. and then you have to attack it with a completely different way yes. than before that happens. How would you, how would you approach? an approaching sepsis. How, how do you know that the patient will get sepsis? Uh, and, and how long can you treat biomarkers? That's, that's another challenge in, in this business. That there is a standard of care, of course, but that's far from very good when you come in as a patient. You never know when a patient comes in and what condition they are in. So you can come in early and you have a slight sepsis and you can create it with antibiotics if it's a bacterial infection. But otherwise, you know, you can be in really, you have slid over into a shock. And then there's other standard of care, but there kind of the options um, uh, disappear. Yep. You can maintain a good pressure and you can make some anti-inflammatory measurements, but there's really nothing to stop the so-called cytokine storm that have pressed it into um, this toxic effect that breaking down the tissue of the vascular. Mm. Okay. So it's really evil. Treatment for everybody yeah. with a cold, I guess. Yep. <laughs> well, thank you so much and thank yep. you so much, Mikkel, for thank the you. presentation. All right, thank you. Thank you.